Hello and welcome to this edition of Back in History. In Back in History, we take you back in time to the events that occurred in the historical past. In this edition, we narrate to you the story of how General Sane Abacha had the opportunity to snatch power from military president Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, but refused to grab the opportunity. The year was 1990, and the month was April, and the date was 22nd. The time was in the early hours of the morning, around 1.30 a.m. Nigerian time. At this time, lots of people had gone to bed. The seat of power and the official residence of the president of Nigeria at the time was Dodan Barracks in Lagos. At that time, Nigeria's federal capital territory was in Lagos. In the silence of the night, something devastating occurred. A coup plot was carried out by soldiers of the Nigerian army and the leader of the coup was a major, Major Gideon Oka. He was of the chief tribe in present-day Benue State. He was a young and vibrant officer of the Nigerian army. Several reports have it that he was close to President Babangida and knew the president's itinerary closely. He led a number of soldiers in the coup, and the mission was to remove military president Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida at all costs and by all means. The coup plotters positioned themselves strategically at the barracks unnoticed and began to shoot directly into the residence of the head of state. The shooting was intensive. Walls were pierced, glasses were broken, and the shelling was heavy. At the commencement of the shelling, Babangida was in the said residence with his wife and children. All of them would have been killed if they had remained in the building, but something of a miracle happened. His loyal ADC, Lieutenant Colonel UK Bello, who lived in the house in the opposite direction to that of the head of state, moved out of his quarters, breathed the orbs, and sneaked into the house of the head of state through the back entrance. He was lucky not to be hit by the volley of the bullets. He entered the residence and evacuated Babangida and his family out of the building and took them out of the barracks to safety. It is reported that he ferried them to the residence of a close friend of Babangida outside the barracks. UK Bello then returned to the barracks to engage the coup plotters and possibly frustrate the coup. Yuke Bello was however killed on his return to the barracks. He was shot at point-blank range as he made attempt to operate the armored tank which was stationed close to the office of the president. At this time, General Asani Abacha, Chief of Army Staff and Chairman Joint Chiefs of Staff had been woken up from the sleep by the sound of the gunfire that had rented the air in the barracks. He then changed to combat gear and took some loyal soldiers with him to engage in a gun duel with the coup plotters and repel the coup. Abacha and his men engaged the coup plotters so seriously and succeeded in chasing them out of the barracks. The next concern was how to stop Gideon Oka from continuing with his national broadcast, which was ongoing at Radio Nigeria. Tactical steps were made and the radio station was surrounded and Gideon Oka was overpowered and his speech terminated. Recall that at this time Babangida had fled to safety and was unable to come out from his hiding. He was the target of the coup plotters and would dare not come out from hiding unless there was an assurance from his close men. There was, in essence, no commander-in-chief on seats, the only commander, Babangida, having gone into hiding. Having succeeded in repelling the coup plotters and frustrating the coup plot, Habacha was at that moment the man in charge of Dodan Barracks, the seat of power. He had the opportunity to assume power and declare himself as the new head of state of Nigeria. He had the men on ground with him, and he was the next most senior military officer in the country after Babangida. 
Ascending the seat of power would have been an easy thing for him to do. It would have been seamless and the rest would have been history. Perhaps he would have just apologized for his friend Babangida. But to the surprise of many, Habata refused to assume the seat of power. He protected the seat for Babangida, made a national broadcast and assured the country that the head of state is in charge and will soon address the nation. In Abacha's speech to the nation, he stated thus, unquote, I, Lieutenant General Sane Abacha, Chief of Army Staff, Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff, have found it necessary to address you once again in the course of our nation's history. In view of the unfortunate developments early this morning, I am in touch with the CGS, Service Chiefs, GOCs, FOCs, AOCs of the Armed Forces and they have all pledged their unflinching support and loyalty to the Federal Military Government of General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida who is perfectly safe and with whom I am in contact. Early this morning there was sporadic firing by a few disloyal and misguided soldiers in some isolated parts of Lagos followed by an embarrassing radio broadcast. Fellow Nigerians, you will all agree with me that the reasons given for this grave misconduct are significantly motivated by greed and self-interest. The soldiers involved decided to constitute themselves into national security nuisance for no other cause than best avarice. Most of these loyal elements have been arrested and are already undergoing interrogation. The remaining dissidents are advised in their own interest to report to the nearest military location and hand over the arms and ammunition in their possession. All formation and unit commanders are hereby directed to exercise effective command and control. At this stage, let me reiterate our commitment to pursue vigorously the transition program. No amount of threat or blackmail will detract the federal military government's intention in this regard. We are set to hand over power to a democratically elected government in 1992. I wish to assure all law-abiding citizens that the situation is now under control and people should go about pursuing their lawful interests. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. End of quotes. Abacha then made arrangements for Babangida to return to the seat of power and address the nation in a national broadcast. Babangida addressed the nation and showered and commune on General Sani Abacha, who had a precious opportunity to clinch the seat of power, but who refused to do so. This is a story of how General Sani Abacha one of the most powerful military officers in Nigeria's military history refused to grab power from his boss and bosom friend even when he had a golden opportunity to have done so. Analysts have said that Abacha was an officer who kept strictly to his words and was not given to betrayal of friendship. Abacha later became the military head of state few months after the exit of Babangida from office in 1993. He ruled Nigeria from 1993 to 1998 when he died in his sleep at Asurok Villa in Abuja, the federal capital territory of Nigeria. Babangida and Abacha became the best of friends up to the time of Abacha's death. On many occasions, Babangida in his interviews have stated that on that night, Abacha saved his life and that Abacha was a true friend of his. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification and for more on the military history of Nigeria and other issues of national and international concern.